Hi, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2 and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. Now, we are going to get right back into No Man Can I Hinder Me. We have completed the book all the way up to chapter 63. Right now, we are in the conclusion. So without further ado, the conclusion reads as such. A very important goal is to align the human standard of beauty with the standard of beauty in other forms of nature. For example, when we look at a bouquet of flowers, we are enchanted by the colors, shapes, fragrances, and differences of each flower. Some people might believe the lily is beautiful. But the lily does not set the standard of beauty for the rest of the flowers in the bouquet. The same people might find the black orchid, the red rose, or the yellow or chrysanthemum equally beautiful. Why then does the European color, facial features, and hair set the standard of beauty for all other races? What must be done to align the multi-standard of floral beauty with the varied array of human beauty? Hmm. What must be done for America to experience the same intensity of beauty in the face, color, and shape of Whoopi Goldberg as in the face, color, and shape of Beyonce? Hmm. Fortunately, I have arrived at that point in my human floral appreciation development. For years, I looked at the pictures of African-appearing ancestors of ancient Egypt, Kemet, and the Songhai Empire. I associated each picture in my mind of the world map of DNA series, which put African people far ahead of all other races and probabilities of genius. In addition, I studied the results of racial comparison of accomplishments in every area of track and field and all other sports. I studied the works of the great chemist, Mr. Carol Barnes, who made the breakthrough discovery of the chemical makeup of melanin, which has the same chemical components of fragrant perfume. This explained why there was a significant, greater pleasantness in the aroma of richly pigmented, dark people than in poorly pigmented, light people. I researched the insecticides sold on the market to combat breakouts of head lice in the hands of people with straight hair. During all of these things, as well as teaching and writing about them, I successfully overcame the programming of a communications media designed to degrade African intrinsic and ancestral value and our physical characteristics. Now for the big question. How can America and the world put the right train of education financial stability, corrective African and American history, employment, and definitions of physical beauty on the right track of universal honor and respect. The solution is difficult and surprising. With apologies to Malcolm X and other doubting people of color, white people are not inherently evil. I found that difficult to believe after suffering so many years of racial injustice. But it is truth that will finally set us all free. My scientific research revealed that all people have a growth in their brain that developed several million years ago. The walnut-sized growth, called the amygdala, developed when 
there was critical value in instantly distinguishing those others from those who nurture and protect you. The alarm immediately sounds off and the reaction is fear, flight, or driving the intruder away. Human beings, as we know them, are aware of the future. So the amygdala not only sounds an alarm to drive off current threats, but also seeks to extinguish future ones. This can mean trying to eradicate an entire group that poses danger. The signal is difficult to disconnect. This is why there is a current danger of black eradication explained in the chapter on the growth of white terrorist organizations in America. In a 1990 Harvard study, psychologists and social scientists, Mazarin Banaji co-created what is known as the Implicit Association Test, IAT which explored the instant connections the brain draws between race and traits. This test, which is available online at www.implicit.harvard.harvard.com E D U. Ask people to pair pictures of white or black faces with positive words like joy, love, peace, and happy, or negative ones like agony, evil, hurt, and failure. Speed of choice is important since the survey explores automatic associations. When respondents are told to link positive traits to whites and undesirable traits to blacks, the choices were almost instant. When whites were labeled failures and blacks exalted as glorious, the choices slowed considerably. A sure sign the brain was struggling. When Banaji and neuroscientist Liz Phelps introduced brain scans of the subjects, the MRI disclosed that when white people were shown black faces, there was significantly greater activation of the amygdala, proving the critical function of the gland is feared conditioning. Black people also have the amygdala. But man developed uh, two types of cortexes hundreds of thousands of years later. When these cortexes are programmed to believe positive things about the others, that is, people who do not look like the family or tribe, the amygdala alarm system is shut off. The reason whites aren't shunned and feared by blacks is because black folks are programmed from birth to associate the color white with all things positive. The 99 synonyms children learn for white are positive. Of one 124 synonyms, children learn for black. 123 are negative. Their first cartoons and films teach children to love and embrace everything white. The films with the most impact highlight the beauty and grandeur of the European land of ancestry i.e. King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table for the English, 
Julius Caesar for the Italians, Napoleon for the French, etc. These and similar films unleash a powerful force called the territorial imperative, which states you cannot reach the heights of your creative or intellectual potential unless you love, honor, and respect the people and land of your ancestry. The territorial imperative is so powerful. Some creatures like the salmon cannot reproduce until they return to the place of origin. Mm, mm, mm. Just that sound. Okay. This fish must swim hundreds of miles upstream against a raging current dodging the grass of hungry bears in order to spawn the next generation of salmon. Conversely, not only do African Americans not learn about their majestic Songhai Empire ancestry, white people have thrust jungle savagery and ugliness into their ancestral memory vacuum. To summarize, the Black Amygdala's alarm system has been shut down because of continuous positive programming of white ancestral ingredient. Conversely, the White Amygdala alarm system has not been shut down because there has been no positive consistent programming of Black ancestral ingredient. A four-week celebration of a parade of African-American personalities in February doesn't even begin to provide the programming necessary. Although the amygdala plays an important role in the racism practice against African-Americans, there are other factors which create psychological violence practice against Black people all over the world. Some of these factors are the results of two and a half centuries of black captivity, so-called slavery. The captivity stands alone in all recorded history as the most horrific of all evilness practiced against a people. The negative results of that era, instead of diminishing as time goes by, have increased over the past 146 years. In order to ensure the permanence of the ever-increasing trillion-dollar profits made from African captivity, the essential goal of white plantation owners was to dehumanize the black family this diabolical, diabolical scheme was instituted in the mid-1600s by passing the first of the Black Codes with the aim of destroying the black man as the family protector and provider. All of the big plantation owners subscribed through the years to at least four periodically issued manuals. The manuals provided the owners strategies in the most effective way to enforce the codes. These manuals are available on the internet to study today. They are the American Farmer, one, the Farmer's Register, the Southern Arcuturus, A R A G. I'm gonna spell that word for you. I might not have said it correctly. As A R, excuse me, it's A G R I C U L T U R I S T. That's for the third one. Fourth, the American Planter and Soul of the South. Here are examples of the diabolical strategies. Here's some examples, y'all. It is more profitable to work a black man so hard that he dies 
and then with the profit by another captive. Cut the black man off from any knowledge of his world-class Songhai empire by taking the babies away from the parents as soon as they arrive from Africa. Proof that this implementation was successful is that few, if any African Americans know the African country or city from which their ancestors were brought. These techniques were designed in the black code specifically to alienate the black man as protector and provider for his family. Make it punishable by death for a black man to defend his wife or daughter against the white man's rapacious intent. Rapacious intent. I'm going to spell that one too. R A P A C I O U S. To strike a white man except in defense of the black man's captor is a crime punishable by death. Any crops or goods owned by a black man may belong to and can be seized by his captor. Even after so-called freedom, these codes were made stricter and generation by a limited employment market job discrimination and a racist justice system. Today, because of intense conditioning, African the African American man stands the most powerless of family men in his role of protector and provider. This conditioning has caused a destruction of respect for him by his wife and children. Black boys have no strong male role model. These boys grow up, marry, and their marriages are faced with same conditional deficiencies. And so the vicious cycle, it, it worsens. The breakup of black families lowers the respect of black people by whites, and thus increases the contempt, a salient element of racism. Here is the bottom line. The real problem facing black people of the world is that everyone has been programmed by the drama of the communications media to despise both the culture of West African ancestry and the physical appearance of African Americans. This conditioning adds to the genetic disposition from the amygdala of white people to fear and dislike black people. This inherent disposition of fear is reinforced because black people are most removed in, fear, in physical appearance from whites. It is impossible for even a thousand pictures of African-American heroes during February. <laughs> to put the African-American history train on the right track. This is because the right track is Songhai, an ancient Egyptian commitment history. Only the subliminal beauty grandeur and sophistication of dramatic motion pictures of the Songhai Empire during the 15th and 16th centuries can affect the amygdala and change the negative attitudes of the world toward present day African Americans. So travel back in time is what I'm kind of reading here to change the mind. Got to see some things we ain't seen before so we can open up that closed door. Open it up so we can see. On Poem Praise 2, I just came with a free flow at the end of the chapter on the snake. That completes the conclusion of 
no man can hinder me. So I want you to stay tuned. And it be at thy will, I will speak with you soon here on Poem Praise 2. We have just the, the epilogue to do. And I see some pictures there too. So um, I want for you to be well. And I want you to take care and be blessed. Okay? And it, uh, again, be at thy will, I'll speak with you soon here on Poem Praise 2. So, until next time, <laughs> later y'all.